We are now recording. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining the 2019 Google Summer of Code project demos. This is part two. Uh, the date is August 26th. I am one of the org admins, Marky Jackson. We have a full set of demos today. I am very, very happy and very, very proud. Uh, for those that don't know when you're joining, just so you are aware, the Google Summer of Code, it's a global program for the open source community organizations, mentors, and students. Uh, there's been 15 years of Google Summer of Code, over 14,000 students covering 109 countries, 651 open source organizations, and over 35 million lines of codes committed. You can find out more about this at summerofcode.withgoogle.com. As most of you are aware, we are the Jenkins organization within the Google Summer of Code. This is our third year participating in the Google Summer of Code. Uh, when this started for this year, we started with seven projects. We're now down to five. If you'd like to look at our projects page, you can do so at Jenkins.io forward slash projects forward slash GSOC. We have our blogs at Jenkins.io forward slash nodes forward slash tags forward slash Google Summer of Code. And finally, if you'd like to reach out to us, you can do so via the Google Summer of Code Getter channel. Uh, the link is there. I'm not going to reiterate that for everybody. I would like to extend a huge thank you to our 2019 students. As most uh, are aware, this is a very competitive program. It starts with a lot of students uh, who have great ideas, and then we have to boil it down to some of the more finer ideas. That doesn't mean the other ones were not good enough. It just meant that we had to make a choice. And these are our students. They have put in a lot of hard work. Uh, just an amazing effort. I thank all of you students for everything you've done. Your efforts uh, have been noted, they have been praised, and we're just so thankful for everything you do. Students Prache, Natasha, Nguyen, Abade, Jack, Prashatek, Yufti, if I butchered any of the names, I deeply apologize, it was nothing personal. And then I'd like to thank the Google Summer of Code team. Uh, things that really might not be known is uh, we're always looking for ideas. We we love to help and mentor. We, we're looking for students. We're looking for mentors, technical advisors, Google Summer of Code admins, all of these great things. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to one of the org admins, one of the mentors. If you feel that you, uh, you, know, you don't want to reach out in a public channel, please feel free to directly message one of us on Getter. You've also, I'm sure you've seen our uh, emails in the uh, Jenkins dev, as well as the Jenkins uh, Summer of Code uh, Google group. So please don't, don't hesitate to reach out if you don't want to do so in a wider form. You can also contact uh, us. Uh, you can look for our information at Jenkins.io forward slash projects forward slash GSOC. So we're going to jump right into the day's presentations. Today we have a Parache. He will be doing the GitLab uh, branch source, uh, multi-branch pipeline support. We have Nancy who will be in the G who will be showing us the Jenkins pipeline uh, for the Open Risk project. That's the LibCore CI, and then we have Sladens who will be doing uh, Jenkins configuration as code plugin developers tools. I would like to make a note: there has been the outreachy uh, presentations that have been postponed for this uh, session two. We do have an open doodle for a session three, which we will be uh, presenting out to the community very shortly, probably within the next day or so. So with that, I am going to turn it over to Parache. Uh, Parache, take it away. Hi, thanks, Marky. Okay, I'll just share my screen now. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the presentation of GitLab Branch Source Plugin. 
So this plugin was developed as a part of Google Summer of Code under Jenkins project. So officially this is the team. So this is me, Parichay, and this Marky, Justin, and Joseph. So together actually we did a lot of work collaboratively and it was a nice experience. So this is the official team, but uh, entire Jenkins community, Oleg, Martin, Jesse, uh, Mar Gavin, everybody put efforts to this plugin. So I just want to thank everybody for their efforts. So yeah, so we have, uh, after three months, we have the final release of our GitLab brand source plugin. So a brief introduction about it. So this is the lightweight plugin, which lets you easily configure your GitLab server on Jenkins. And we have support for configuration as code, which is JCASC, and you can do that uh, by using YML. And the main part, which is multi-branch pipeline and folder organizations, uh, that, that has been also uh, implemented. And with that, uh, generally, uh, before, uh, what you had to do is using, uh, for uh, in your GitLab server, you have multiple projects and in that you have multiple branches, tags, merge requests, etc. So for that you had to create a additional jobs. So right now you just don't have to create job, What you just have to create one job and that manages everything from uh, triggering the build uh, builds uh, on uh, update events or you can just trigger it from your GitLab server and etc. And you can also create the job using job DSL, which is a Groovy script. Uh, we have also the new SEM trait APIs uh, that basically lets you uh, configure your jobs and we have implemented new APIs that were requested by a user and this is quite powerful and lets, uh, lets the plugin be more extensible. Okay, so this is uh, what we did in the phase one. I'll just quickly recap what we did in all the phases. So in the phase one, the GitLab API plugin was developed and there was a GitLab server configuration part of the plugin, which also allows you to create GitLab personal access token inside Jenkins. Also, you, uh, JCAS support was added, uh, repository was incrementally fired, and Java 8 compatibility with stream APIs. And there were three enhancement and fix releases in this part. So in the second part, uh, there was implementation of brand source. So we had a lot of features, including checkout credentials, uh, st status notifier of GitLab, uh, these traits like subgroup projects, discovery, uh, you can skip notification, override hook modes, and discover tags. Uh, we have also worked on reducing the API calls, which uh, increases the performance of the plugin and we had two alpha releases in this part. And yep, so phase three, uh, which is this phase that just got completed. And in this, we, it was more about fixing the bugs and adding some of the missing features uh, based on users' feedback. So uh, webhook support was broken. So we fixed it. It basically lets you trigger the job on uh, GitLab events and system hook support is also uh, uh, part of GitLab support, which will let you create uh, different jobs, a uh, different uh, repository in your uh, GitLab server and Jenkins will detect it, create the webhook on that and basically uh, add it to your job if it's configured that way. So this was, uh, and then trusted permission strategy, it is a security feature that was uh, recommended by Oleg. So what it lets uh, uh, you to do is uh, sometimes the fork, uh, fork merge request can be from untrusted users. So you do not want your CI to be broken or some secret details to be shown up publicly or anything which is damaging your security. So uh, trusted permission strategy will only ensure that the users uh, having access level of developer uh, maintainer or owner access level will be allowed to trigger the build. And some uh, other traits like you can trigger the build with comment on your MR. Sometimes the externally uh, server fails to build. So this is also a user requested feature and log build status as comment. This was also added so, because sometimes the 
uh, GitLab server has not no feature for the status notification, for example, for merge request. So this helps. And we have also added the JKS and job DSL documentation to the repository, and that will help users to configure the plugin. And uh, on this, we had three beta releases, and based on the testing of our testers and our users, we finally had one uh, one GA release. And uh, I'm glad to say that uh, so far we do not have any bugs reported. But I do not say that it's totally bug free, but yeah. So kind of it's a use in production scale. Okay, so I'll just quickly show you a demo of it. So I'm happy. script in that the organization folder here so the script I'll save it and then we select build now and yep yeah, so the build has been completed uh, a new project has been created here based on our configuration in the script so i'll just select that scan the group you can see the configuration here you can see the configuration here with uh, all the support uh, of the traits that we configured okay so let's see the scanning oops uh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, so maybe there is some issue that I am facing. I do not know why because I tested the same script and should be maybe with some Okay, so Okay mm -hmm. That's fine, Karate. Don't worry about it. Just keep moving on with your presentation. You're doing a great job. Okay. So uh, uh, we have uh, this. So, uh, so you can just uh, go to the repository. You can. Uh, we have the instruction there, and you can just uh, build it yourself and test it out. Uh, there is more to it in the documentation. There is uh, all the description, how to configure, etc. And we have all the, uh, the GA releases also here. You can just test it out. So some of the statistics in the three months, we had two contributors. Uh, we had 49 commits. There were 111 issues out of which 95 were fixed. Uh, 55 pull requests were made, 2.5k installs of GitLab API plugin, 125 installs of GitLab branch source plugin so far and uh, there were 12 blog posts outlining all the week's work and yeah so you can just uh, if you want to talk to us about uh, any issue or any feature request you can just uh, drop your mail in our developer mailing list i'll be keeping a track of that and you can report issues to the jenkins zero with gitlab brand source plugin component and you can also join our GitHub channel. Uh, so you can just uh, tag me there or anybody who is uh, in. Okay, so uh, th th this is what I plan for the future. Uh, I'll be actively maintaining the GitLab brand source plugin. So I am also planning to add GitLab support in Blue Ocean. And then also I'll be exploring ways how Jenkins CI can be modernized modernize in the sense that uh, I think the front end can be improved as well as uh, Jenkins can support uh, additional tech stacks uh, that is being evolved uh, these days, a lot of them. So I, I will explore ways by taking uh, 
feedback from the Jenkins users because I am not a particular DevOps user, so uh, might be some user feedback would be more help, helpful and so my exploration would be on that. Okay, so this is all about my GSOC project. So feel free to ask any questions if you have. Thank you very much, Pracha. I'd like to thank you for your, your massive effort that you put forth in this. You were, uh, as one of the, the mentors for this project, I will have to say it very self-managed itself. You did a, a, a just a phenomenal job and you're just a very good person to deal with. And I love your demeanor and your positivity. So thank you very much for all of your effort. Does anybody have any questions uh, either here on the recording or via the Gitter channel. I am looking and I don't see that we have any questions on Gitter. I have a question. So it's a little bit about a question about the extensibility aspect. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so this was originally developed for GitLab, right? Uh, from an extensibility aspect, is that for, <clears throat> excuse me, for any sort of SCM or is it for just like other Git providers? It's about the plugin job functionality, like uh, some, uh, this, uh, some of the traits that has been developed, like skip notification, uh, this is a part of job, like it notifies, you, it makes additional configuration to your job, like uh, you, you do not notify your GitLab, so uh, th that can be a different plugin, so that way extensibility. All right, thanks. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I think so. It, okay. it sounds like this is a bit more generic than I was thinking. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of generic. Okay, that's good. I like that. Mm -hmm. That was a good presentation, by the way. Okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, the comparison with uh, GitHub uh, branch source. So from your point of view, what is uh, the feature overlap? Uh, what is uh, missing uh, in GitHub uh, branch source? Uh, or are they on par uh, with regards to features now? Okay. Uh, so far, uh, I think uh, uh, all the features that is there in GitHub branch source plugin, it has been covered in GitLab branch source plugin. And we have some additional features as well. And the, some of the features that you might uh, find missing here, it's because maybe uh, GitLab server does not support it by default. So, uh, but my, in my knowledge, I think all the features are completed. That's great, thank you. Okay, just a heads up. Uh, I mean, uh, just now I rescanned the same configuration and it just somehow started working. So yeah, so if you want to uh, show the demo now, why not? Yeah, thanks. Okay. Just share your screen again. Yeah. Okay. So, so this is the uh, scanned uh, um, job. So let's see the status of it. So here, there are two projects that has been discovered. You can go to the folder and it's, it's basically folders and here there are jobs for all the branches, merge requests and tags. Okay, so th this is the tags and you can just go ahead and see the output everything. So let's see uh, that. Uh, okay. so, so. Okay, so okay, so, am I sharing my screen now? Yes, you are. Okay, so so I'll just go to one of uh, so you can see that uh, the uh, comment has been made on your merge request that uh, Jenkins has failed. You can just write Jenkins rebuild. Uh, so this was made on the 11 merge request and a, a build has been triggered. So you can see the output here. So it was basically the issue with the Jenkins file. So the build will generally fail because uh, because that's how it is. But sometimes external failures occur. So in that case, you can just rebuild it. So 
yeah that would be all for my demonstration yeah is there any specification of uh, current commands supported by commands? Uh, you mean the rebuild? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, you can modify the comment body. I mean, a Jenkins rebuild is done by, by default, but a user has the flexibility to okay. modify it. Yeah, so just to share some context on that, uh, I was basically hacking something like that for GitHub last week. Because yeah, we have issue with CI Jenkins IO with rebuilds there, and yeah, the idea was to uh, partially replicate replicate uh, interface from Pro because yeah, Pro is one of um, engines for Kubernetes which also supports command talks, and basically this is the only mode it supports. So I had interest to have similar interface for Jenkins, but yeah, for me it was Jenkins rebuild, but but uh, was mentioned in the beginning. So maybe once it's ready, there could be some opportunities for somehow merging uh, these features, maybe on a CM API level, or maybe on something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's possible. I think I'll discuss with Stefan, who's the maintainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think with GitHub plugin, um, I'm not sure if this is still the case, but I know I had to install the uh, pull request comment build plugin in order to get this functionality for GitHub. So. Uh, it's nice that it's a trait that's just kind of like available for you. You don't have to go search for it. Um, but yeah, pulling that down to like an SCM API level would be cool. Oh, yeah, maybe not SCM API, but high level, level sure. API. So yeah, there are some discussions yeah. about that. So maybe we could do that. Yeah. Okay. Let's collaborate later. It would be a nice opportunity. Yeah. Awesome. Does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, well, thank you very much, Prats. I very much appreciate uh, everything that you've done here. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, next up, we have Nancy. She will be presenting the Jenkins pipeline for Open Risk Project, which is the LibCore CI. So, Nancy, I'm going to turn it over to you. And if you want, uh, go ahead and share your screen and take away the presentation. You're muted. Oh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Nancy. So, uh, so my project is um, continuous integration for hardware projects on LibreCore CI. So, um, this year I did my GSOC with Posse Foundation and uh, so I had this, I, like, this is a very great idea to have a CI for hardware projects. So, uh, so we have uh, our automation server as Jenkins, and I worked under Oleg and Stafford. So, um, okay, so I'll be just presenting it. Um, yeah. So uh, FOSI Foundation, uh, just a brief interview, uh, just a brief introduction about FOSI Foundation. It's a non-profit foundation and it promotes and assists the free and open source digital hardware designs. So uh, you can go to the link and um, can see other, uh, other hardware projects. Uh, so we have an idea regarding LibreCore CI. So I worked under LibreCore CI. It's an approach service to provide continuous integration to hardware projects and totally powered by Jenkins. So uh, as we can see from the diagram, so we have a like, uh, we can maintain all the uh, we can maintain all the hardware projects, the CI regarding hardware projects. Uh, so this summer, I worked with Open Risk, Open Risk community. I worked on uh, I worked on integrate. I worked on CI for Open Risk, which is a family of free and open source processor implementation on the risk architecture. So uh, we can see uh, this is the whole diagram, which can which which when which can brief about LibreCore CI. So it's powered by Jenkins, and we have a predefined Docker images, which can be used for the various for the various configuration of various hardware projects. So projects they connect their infrastructure to LibreCore CI, and there's a quick setup of nodes by project maintainers. Um, for example, I developed some Docker images for Open Risk projects, specific to Open Risk project. So uh, just to recap of first phase. Uh, so first phase was all about uh, 
all about enhancing the CI pipelines because it previously worked on Travis CI. So I just moved it to Jenkins. And for that, I created a, a, a Docker, Docker container for that, so, uh, which has the environment for all the, uh, for it to run. So now the open risk CI runs in Jenkins. Then uh, about the second phase, uh, yeah. So the second phase about was about uh, working on Yosis synthesis. Uh, so Yosis synthesis um, is for all the hardware projects, like is for hardware world for the RTL synthesis. So um, so I worked on Yosis synthesis, and there was a there were there were changes in code description file of the more one KX, which is one of the project of open risk. So what do we mean by code description file? So we worked on Fusoc. So Fusoc is a packet, is a packet tool manager, which is a, which is a very great tool. So it provides everything for FPGA and hardware tools. So uh, there's a code description file in which we have to define everything, what we want. And uh, Yosis, uh, so we have a backend of Yosis and Fusoc. So we basically have to define in the code description file that we want to use your synthesis. So the backend is Edelize. Now, during this, when I wanted to integrate your synthesis in open risk project, uh, we had to do, we had to face many, um, we had to face many issues, which led to developments. So that, uh, so the issue was that uh, we wanted initially, we wanted to try only for monitoring resource usages. Uh, we don't want to go to hardware. So we wanted to make it flexible so that we can use only for monitoring the resource usages and also for the hardware projects if we have hardware connected FPGAs. So current, so we made it flexible. So there were developments in Edelize which made it flexible. And now we can uh, we can monitor the resource usages for any hardware project. So the, the new released version is this. Uh, then we come to third phase. So third phase was... Um, so third phase has a had a great progress. So I could complete Yossi synthesis and uh, I could publish its result with plot plugin. Uh, earlier I was using performance plugin, but then I came to plot plugin because we were generating a CSP file because I created a parser which can uh, which can take which can uh, which can output which can take the uh, data from losses.log file which is quite big and uh, can provide the printing statistics, like how many wires and how many uh, processors and all the resource which are used in our particular hardware projects. And we can publish it uh, using plot plugin. Then, uh, so due to this, there's a new release version of Libricos CI based Docker image, which is a standard uh, Docker image for Libricos CI. And uh, so this version has the new uh, feature, which is Yosis metrics parser and it can be used by any hardware project. Uh, it can be used by any hardware project uh, who wants to uh, who wants to have this feature of Yossi synthesis, wants to see the monitoring, uh, wants to have the monitoring resource usages. Um, other than that, we use TAP plugin, uh, Jenkins TAP plugin. So uh, my work was to convert the test results into TAP format and then publish the results on TAP plugin. Yeah, so other than that, uh, I wanted to make it generalized for any hardware project so that uh, not only for open risk, it can be used for any hardware project. So first part was uh, inside even even open risk is a huge family. So I created like I worked on creating a pipeline library so that it is generic for all the projects which can which comes under open risk. Other than that, the main thing which I worked on was Yosis synthesis generalizing your synthesis uh, so i created a pipeline library which was generalized for any hardware project and it can be extended if we want to connect fpgas to uh, see the pnr matrices so uh, it can be configured for va uh, various hardware project with a simple declarative call so uh, these are the results which i want to show like right now for any hardware project we can visualize the project we can visualize the result in this way we can have a cell count we can uh, so yeah this is by using plot plugin this is by using tap plugin so i just want to describe brief about uh, the pipeline library i worked on so this was uh, open risk pipeline which is uh, which is generalized for any open risk project so uh, I created this pipeline. We just have to define the job. We just have to define certain parameters. 
uh, then we have fusoc so i worked on creating i worked on gener uh, generalizing the fusoc invocation uh, so that it can be used by various projects um, it it just uh, chooses a base docker image uh, with fusoc which we can define in our libre course it adds the library it runs the fusoc steps then uh, then we have yosa synthesis report so uh, yosa synthesis report uh, so i added this in uh, our libre course pipeline library this is quite generalized we just need to define the core uh, of any hardware project the target the log path and we just need to have a a simple declarative call and we can have the whole yosa synthesis process going on with the uh, with the results which will be published on jenkins so uh this was uh this was about the project yeah so uh what did i learn in gsoc i learned about various technologies docker jenkins jenkins is a great tool i think um it was quite um uh, i think uh in, like having this whole idea of ci for hardware project was possible through jenkins because it's open source definitely and we can do anything uh with jenkins like self we can have a self hosted setup uh then i learned a lot about groovy programming developing jenkins library concepts of dsl then obviously various edu tools uh in the end i was i just want to say like we invite more hardware projects to use the libricos pipeline library because i worked hard to make it generalized so that it can be used by various tools various various projects uh especially if somebody is interested to have your synthesis and if you're interested so please reach out to us in gitter chat uh here we have all the links and uh i've described my most of the work in blog post yeah so yeah in the end i want to thank you uh my mentor oleg uh kind of supported me a lot uh with all the queries stafford he is the core maintainer of open risk uh fosi foundation open open risk and jenkins organization definitely to uh, provide me an opportunity to present my work thank you very much nancy this is a very great body of work really awesome i have a couple questions when you ran your test on this did you run them against can you can you just talk about how you ran the various uh, tests for this yeah i can just uh, am i uh, my screen is shared to you yes it is yeah yeah Yeah, thank yes. you. Okay, uh, I'll just show the um, yeah, I'll just show the uh, the pipeline. So this is uh, I created. So basically, uh, this is for more one kx, and I did a configuration. So we can see that. So it's a simple configuration. We just need to call this step like the Yosis report, and we just need to set the parameters. Just save it. and when we build it so i've already done this because it takes a lot of it takes a bit of time uh, so i've already done it for the presentation so we can see that we have plot graphs for cell count we can see different parameters for example sp lutes or uh, sp carries which were part of this hardware project so we can visualize all that thing we can compare the results according to the dates if we have any yeah and also for resource usage like public wire bits wires cells memory bits yeah are there any are there is there anything on the road map for other tests that you want to incorporate or plan to incorporate into this uh i'm sorry uh can you can you please uh elaborate a bit so yeah. i see that you do like for public wire bits and and the the memory bits Are you going yeah. to incorporate do you see anything else being incorporated in for the use of this like what other cool things can this do like what other things can be added to it Yes Yeah so uh I think this can be uh so um as you can see uh okay I'll just show so I can extend my pipeline library uh so you can see that this is right now this is only for monitoring the resource usages later if somebody wants to see the bit stream like uh, have want to have the bit stream pass or any other parameters when fpgas are connected so we can extend this pipeline library to have that feature yeah okay thank you yeah does anyone else have any questions
all people think maybe I could add a few words about the project. Yeah, so yeah, basically it's uh, when you work with hardware, it means that you work on not only with hardware, but uh, yeah, with dozens of different uh, technology chains, including software, various continuous uh, uh, integration uh, DSLs, etc. And uh, Nancy's project uh, is uh, an example of that. So she was working across multiple uh, GitHub organizations with different roles, with different practices, uh, and with completely different technology stacks. So it's ideal languages for hardware projects. It's a lot of scripting uh, in Python, uh, in Bash, if I recall correctly. Plus it's uh, Docker, plus it's Groovy, Pipeline, and also some Java because we, yeah, we needed to dive uh, into Jenkins code in some cases. So yeah, there was a lot of collaboration across uh, multiple organizations and yeah, it was probably the most challenging part of the project because yeah, we were working in uh, so many different areas. But yeah, Nancy did really well. So basically, all the main goals of the projects are delivered, and we've got some uh, improvements for LibreCore CI as a generic framework. There is still a lot of work to be done there, but uh, yeah, it's uh, going great in the right direction. So yeah, thanks a lot, Nancy, for all your contributions. Yeah, and actually, it was sudden that we started working on this project uh, not in May, but in December, I guess. So Nancy yeah. reached out uh, to uh, LibreCourse organizations earlier, and yeah, we had a lot of contributions which are not uh, listed uh, in the current presentation because yeah, they were done before the JSOC timeframe. Really, really awesome. Thank you for all your hard work, Nancy. Very much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Okay, next up we have Sladen. Am I saying the first name right? I feel like I'm totally bushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. It's perfect. No, no, it's Layden. You got it right. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Ooh, made me feel good there. Thank you. So up next, <laughs> Slayton uh, will be uh, presenting on the Jenkins Configuration as Code Plugin Developer Tool. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, and you can start sharing your screen for your demo. Yeah, cool. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, I can see your screen. Yeah, cool. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I'll be presenting the JCAS DevTools project. Um, this project comes under the Community Bridge, which was a Linux Foundation initiative that was just started. So, as we all know, JCAS has a lot of support for writing YML files directly without without any without any without touching the Jenkins UI. So. The JCAS project actually, one second, just let me move the screen forward. Okay, cool. So things I'll be presenting here will be just an introduction about what I do, what am I studying and stuff. The problem statement about what things are missing in JCAS, whether I am dealing with a broken schema, the developer tools that I'm going to implement, etc. Uh, the community bridge, uh, what is it all about? What are the goals for the phases? Since we have just two phases because the second phase is, uh, to be honest, it's quite huge and the status so i'll be demoing some whatever work i've been done whatever I've been, whatever i've been doing uh, and the future plans of course okay so let me just go yeah so i'm a third year undergrad from mumbai university i've interned at quite a few uh, companies in the past uh, most notably the open mainframe project that's currently going on actually that's another initiative by the linux foundation um, and that deals with all of S390X systems and stuff. So a lot of C, C++ programming. And I've worked for Cloudy Boss, that's an Australian startup. Uh, quite a lot of Java there as well. So as you know that since Java is quite of a strong background, Jenkins, I was naturally attracted to Jenkins as a project. You can find me on GitHub, GitHub, and of course my personal website if anyone is interested. So let's move on to the community bridge. Okay, so I came across the community bridge project I think in the outreachy channel, which uh, on which I like quite frequently post updates. So the com I reached out to him stating that is there a availability for the community bridge project, and he told me that there was. He gave me a range of projects and said that Jcask is one that they have all of the uh, foundations to undertake. So the community bridge project is one that is hosted by. It's a new initiative that is uh, by the Linux Foundation, um, and it has a host of projects under it. So under which Jenkins obviously uh, comes in. So yeah, cool. 
Okay, so the goal for the community bridge project basically is two phases. First is the JSON schema validation. So as we all know, we write a host of YML files and we have no way of uh, validating whether what we're writing is correct. So maybe you write some YML file and you realize there's a typo somewhere. So Jenkins, neither does uh, VS Code nor IntelliJ warn you that the YML file that you've written is wrong unless you load it up into Jenkins and then Jenkins says that it's, uh, it's invalid while trying to load it up. So part one of the project deals with the JSON schema validation. So basically fixing the JSON schema that was, um, that was, that is currently generated by, um, Jenkins and validating it. So it needs proper validation before, it, before Jenkins can load up the configuration and configure, uh, all of the plugins. And the second one is, uh, the most uh, requested and most favorite feature actually the auto completion for JCast. So we run into while coding developers, basically we are so used to auto completion in VS code in IntelliJ and various such IDs. So it would be huge if we had ID auto completion for JCast where we just maybe type in system and system message and stuff and uh, Jenkins just auto completes it for us. How cool that would be. So for assisting me on this project, I have three wonderful mentors, Tim, Joseph and Oleg who will be guiding me throughout this project. And uh, since it's just, I think 20 days since the project started, uh, we're quite initial, we're quite, we're quite in the initial phases of this project. So um, I'm not going to be uh, introducing groundbreaking features right now, but yeah, over time I will. So, yeah. So a little bit about Jcast for those who don't know, I think everyone does, but still. So Jcast allows you to write, uh, yeah, YML files right out of the box. No need to, uh, there's no need of clicking on different UI buttons and um, writing system messages, maybe writing, uh, maybe configuration of different types of plugins. We have so many plugins in Jenkins um, going in and configuring each one, writing their messages or how they behave. Instead of doing all of this, you could just do this. So write Jenkins, system message, number of executors and all of your plugins. Suppose if you have maybe the credentials plugin or maybe something else, you could just open up a YML file, load it up and uh, load up the JCast plugin and uh, just hit load. And uh, this would configure the UI without you using any, without you using your mouse basically. So moving on. Okay. So phase one. So it's been 20 days since phase one started and uh, we have been working on the generation of the schema basically. So the current schema that is generated has been written in jelly files. So basically XML executable XML. So the jelly, the files that are currently being generated are actually not up to the draft uh, standards. Uh, whatever files that have been written, they don't validate at all. So my first task was to actually fix that. So what I've done is we have re we decided that instead of following the entire jelly approach, we would rewrite it in Java. So rewriting in Java has its own advantages. It becomes easily testable right out of the box. Uh, it's easy to debug going line by line. Um, if you find anything's wrong with the schema, you could easily just fix it, make up a pull request and submit it. Okay. Um, some of the other things that uh, the jelly files do is they make it very hard to debug because um, there are different jelly files being called in each of these, um, in each of the execution steps by the DSL plugin. So it's quite, it's quite, it's very, very difficult to maintain. So we decided for a rewrite in Java. So the works are done so far. So since we decided that we would require a rewrite, we decided to start right from scratch. So basically to generate a schema, we need the plugins and for each plugin has its own configurators, its descriptors and so on. So we decided the approach that we were going to follow is take all of these plugins, take all of their configurators. And uh, basically whatever sub configurator or sub attributes they have, we would just uh, kind of um, take generate a JSON object and then uh, generate the schema accordingly. So that was, uh, these are step one and step two, that is to generate the schema configurator wise and uh, basically make sure that we follow the jelly approach. So we just didn't want to reinvent the wheel here. We just followed what the jelly files did and basically just wrote it in Java. And it's not easy as it sounds because uh, the jelly files do a host of things. And uh, to replicate that in Java is kind of is kind of kind of very, very difficult because uh, because it's it is it's not easy to understand a JSON schema. Okay, so now demo time. 
um let me just uh, one second let me just take this okay so this is the original if you can see my screen yeah so this was the uh, schema that we that the current jelly files generate so as you can see it doesn't validate very well you can see a host of errors here so this is an online tool that i'm using to verify that the json schema is correct so you can see that um, it should be an array and there should the mismatch in schemas and one offs so you cannot actually write anything here so that it kind of it kind of, it's kind of no use actually to be honest so what we did was we generated the schema in java and we it's, it's six version six as you can see we decided to go with the latest version i think version seven or it is six it doesn't oh yeah we decided to go with version seven so as you can see the gen, the schema generated right out of the box is valid according to draft seven so we are making progress in that uh, aspect apart from that uh, since this schema you cannot validate anything against it no matter what you write it doesn't it just the schema is invalid so it doesn't matter but here as you can see uh, since the schema is valid you are allowed to make change you can actually verify that the json that you are passing is correct so now you'll be wondering why am i passing a json so what we do is we take a yml file that jenkins has and we convert it to json and then validate against the json schema so as you can see we have our jenkins i've taken a very very simple jenkins yml file so as you can see if you write a system message maybe hello world yeah so and number of executors is like two yeah boom so the document validates against the schema so this is a valid schema the moment you decide that your number of executors should be hello world yeah, bang should be an integer so yeah, so basically this is what we have done so far. We've managed to uh, make sure that um, basic nesting, simple level one nesting is valid. Uh, the moment you shift on to more levels of nesting, it becomes quite difficult to validate the schema because as you can see, we've uh, we followed the um, jelly format. So that didn't handle nesting very well. So that is one of my future goals that I'll be talking about in my presentation. Um, if I could just go on, yeah, future plan because uh, I've, I'm done with kind of presenting some of my work. Uh, the future plan would be first of all to fix the nesting, so support nesting of YML configuration files. So as you go deeper and deeper into Maven generations and JDKs and stuff, we need VAM, we need our uh, we need our validator to kind of validate all of that. So that is actually phase one. I've put it in C. Uh, it's not priority wise, but still this is priority number one. Priority number two is to figure invoke validation before application. So basically now there is no validator. I think as uh, Joseph told me, so we need to maybe validate it before applying the schema so that it's much easier for the developer to figure out uh, what he's doing. And the third one is addition of custom configurators. So developers can add their own configurators according to the plugin. So basically we were thinking of developing some sort of an, conf uh, an API where uh, the developer just puts in his plugin and uh, we just pick up the descriptors, the attributes and stuff and just bang, we generate the schema according to our requirements. So phase one ends in approximately two weeks. Oleg told me to be a bit careful with the future plan. <laughs> I am careful. So um, yeah, apart from that, yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Uh, feel free to chat with us in the Dev uh, DevTools project. There are not a lot of members there, so kind of feel free to put in inputs there. Yeah, uh, that's about it. Any questions, please? Any questions? Anyone? Questions? So we can ask some. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, basically, I'm not a mentor in this project per se. Uh, Kim and uh, Joseph are mentors. I uh, help a bit, uh, mostly as organizer of Community Bridge. But yeah, thanks a lot for sliding, uh, sliding for working on this project because yeah, it's uh, a new experiment for us. Uh, it's also really valuable for the community because the yeah, agent's configuration as code is a new blade. We've got more than 5,000 installations uh, since it was announced and yeah, it's just skyrocketing. So they are released every week. Um, some releases may uh, break uh, the configurations. And it's really essential for users to have access to schema so that uh, they can validate their configurations before applying them. And same for development tools. 
So basically, my vision is not only IDE auto completion, but also validation and either the deployment in IDE. So, for example, as a user, I can take one IDE, like say Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ IDEA, and I can uh, manage my instance from there across all kinds of development tools for configuration management. I mean, yep. automatic configuration management. Uh, so, yeah, it would be the end goal. Um, yeah. And the project just starts, so there is definitely a lot of uh, things uh, to complete, but uh, there yep. is already some progress, and this is great. So, yeah, thanks, Sladen, for that. Yep. Yep. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Very good work, Sladen. Very good work. I, does I anybody have else have been? Yes. Hi. Um, this is Martin speaking. I want to know, how do you generate the schema? Like, is it hard-coded, or is it extracted from... Is it extracted I, from automatically? No, no, no. I could, I could actually share my screen if you want to have a look at the, uh, at the, the generation. Is that a, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yes. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, Martin. We actually, uh, we actually pick up the configurators basically from every, um, from each and every plugin and. Um, so the type, obviously, since we need them to be, since the basic con base configurators are objects and uh, all of the nesting comes under it. So we're basically picking up most of the configurators and uh, having their types already hard coded. And uh, as we go into nesting, that is the problem actually, as we go into nesting, so we need to define their properties properly because if we, if we get any of the properties wrong, the nesting doesn't work and your schema isn't, uh, isn't of any use. Although it will be valid, it won't be of any use. So this is what we are trying to work on that when we go into levels of nesting, that is once we put in the properties that uh, the further, uh, the further kind of um, integrations that are done for the schema are actually valid and uh, the nesting is probably done properly. That's what the jelly failed to do. Actually, the jelly files fail to actually uh, incorporate any sort of nesting and they're just, they're just kind of bare bones separated from each other. And uh, when you, kind of uh, try to validate it, nothing works. So that's how we are trying to actually generate it. Sounds great, thank you. Yep, welcome. This is great work. Does anybody else have any other questions? I don't see anything in the chat nor in the Gitter channel. Well, I'd like to thank all of the present, uh, the presenters today. It was very awesome. Uh, I know everybody has put in a lot of hard work to this, so I am very, very happy and I'm very thankful for everybody. So definitely take a moment, take a bow for yourself and be thankful for what you've put forth. This concludes our presentations for today. Does anybody have any questions in general about anything that they've seen that they would like to talk about? Does anybody have any questions about just the Google Summer of Code program that they would like to talk about? Yeah, how to join. Say again? How to join. Yes, thank you. Well, since you asked, I will go ahead and let everybody know. So we have a Google Summer of Code Getter channel. We, that is one way you can join. Another way is you can send an email to our, we have a Google group, which is a Google Summer of Code Jenkins All. You, uh, you know, if you don't want to, you know, ask outright, you're more than welcome to approach any of the, the mentors. I'm sure the students would love to talk to you. The org admins will talk to you all day long. So be careful if you ask there. Uh, I joke when I say that, please feel free to ask any, any of us uh, what we can do. There are so many projects that we have. There's so many ideas out there. So what I really would like to say is, is as a lot of you understand that the Jenkins uh, project is an open source project. We try to be very diverse. We try to be a very inviting community and very helpful. So if you feel that you, you know, oh, I don't want to ask in public, talk to one of us. Uh, for any of the people that were at Jenkins World, you'll know, just the org admins I can speak for, we are super, super approachable. And by, by and large, this community is very approachable. A lot of our SIGs need help. We need more people. We cannot do this project as a whole without everybody 
uh, chipping in, even if it's something as little as working on a doc or just asking, hey, I only have an hour a month that I can dedicate, what can I do? We will help you get involved in the open source community, but more so, mo more so towards the Jenkins, pro uh, the Jenkins Google Summer of Code project. If you are interested in this, if this, if this sounds awesome and you'd like to, to be a part of what you've just seen here, please do reach out either via email through the Google Summer of Code uh, all or via Gitter at the Google Summer, uh, we have it's called GSOC-SIG. You can reach out to any of the org admins. Uh, I want to thank the org admins. This is a very dedicated thing. We spend a lot of time making sure this is good. I want to thank all of the mentors. They give, this is, we don't get paid to do this. Everybody dedicates their time to make this. But more importantly, and by and large, none of the Google Summer of Code is possible without the students. What you all do is nothing shy of amazing because you put forth, you take sometimes the criticisms, and the, but the guided, of course. It is so awesome where, that we're now coming to the end and to think this started what seems like an eternity ago. So thank you all very, very much. And I would like to just, just give you a round of applause and, and thank you very much. Would anybody else like to add anything? Well, I will add uh, that we will make sure to post all links um, um, in the meetup page. And if you want to contribute even without GSOC, there is a number of opportunities. And for example, in one month, so there will be Hacktoberfest, and we will make sure to participate. So if you have some ideas for smaller projects, uh, uh, for especially for newcomers and also for more experienced contributors, so let us know because yeah, we can use them as a source uh, for Hacktoberfest and uh, other hackathons we want to organize over the year. Well, that concludes this presentation. Uh, also note that there will be a third presentation for the outreachy uh, things that I mentioned at the beginning. There is a doodle currently going around to firm up the times for that. So do look out for that. If nobody has any other questions, uh, that concludes this meeting. I thank you all for taking the time uh, out of your busy schedules to sort of celebrate uh, our students. Maki, I'd like to add a thing. Yes, please. Okay. So, hi. So, if uh, any of the future uh, uh, aspirated uh, guys are looking uh, into this video, I would like to suggest you to participate in GSOC. G it's a really nice experience. I, I learned a lot in the three months. Uh, like, uh, I worked with a lot of people. I learned them. I learned about them personally. So, it was really nice. And... Uh, so just a personal experience that I also got a job because of Jenkins. Uh, yeah, GSOC is itself a really uh, nice uh, addition to your profile. But uh, in addition to that, being a part of Jenkins, which is really popular in uh, the organizations that use it. And so it, it really uh, is a nice organization and mentors are really helpful. So I, I like to request if you ever want to participate in GSOC, please do consider Jenkins as one of your uh, choices because uh, you may like it and you want to participate here. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks Thank you very much, Prachi. Yeah, and of course we should say thanks to Google as well because yeah, GSOC is not free. Yeah, even if mentors and uh, don't get paid, organizations get some stipend. For example, uh, we use uh, this stipend uh, this year to sponsor uh, trips of our students to Jenkins World and other conferences. Uh, so yeah, all of stipend still goes uh, to sponsoring student projects, but yeah, also our students get stipend, and yeah, basically it's uh, still uh, tens thousands of dollars invested by Google just in uh, Jenkins project, and also uh, Jenkins just one project. Uh, there are hundreds of projects uh, this year, so yeah, you can imagine the scale. Uh, and yeah, thanks a lot to Google for running this uh, initiative. And yeah, it's 15 years of JSOC this year. Hopefully, they will be 16th year next uh, Yeah, so let's see. That's as old as Jenkins, hmm? isn't it? That's how old Jenkins is too now.
Yeah, 15. Like Jenkins is also 15 years. Uh, we had a cake at uh, Jenkins Hope United States. We did. We did have a cake there. Okay. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Lisbon. Lisbon is going to be very good. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Okay. If there's nothing else, I thank everybody for joining. I will go ahead and stop the recording at this point. Have a great time, everybody.